Hello guys and welcome to this episode of the Budding Watch Enthusiast. So I have two watches on my wrist today, uh, both of which we're going to be talking about in today's video. The later part of the video, I'm going to be giving you my full review on the Neckin Renegade that I've had now for about a month. But before we get to that part of the video, I do have a quick unboxing uh, with my latest acquisition. So without any further ado, let's get right to that. All right, I told you guys that it was coming. Um, I told you guys that it was my probably my big purchase for the year. Uh, I did go ahead and buy a Monta Sky Quest. So let's go ahead and check it out. Uh, let's go ahead and get the outer box off first, of course. All right, so we have the the very nice wooden box. So let's go ahead and crack it open and check out our Sky Quest. Well, let's actually get to the some of the goodies first. So we have a uh, gray NATO strap. We have the little Manta uh, carrying case and a strap change tool inside. Uh, we have the manual and the warranty card, which we will, uh, I'll, I'll get the warranty card out just so we can see what that looks like. Pretty cool. And then, yeah, and we have the watch. So let's, let me go ahead and uh, de-bubble wrap this for you guys. So yeah, there we go, the Sky Quest. Uh, decided to go with the blue steel version, as you can see here. It's already running. Uh, let me go ahead and get all the plastic off of this so we can check it out in all its glory. All right, so there we go. All of, I, don't, I don't think I've ever seen more uh, protective film on a watch before. <laughs> this had it on everything. Uh, good thing, though. Comes in, you know, in pristine condition then. That is, oh man, I'm, I'm, you guys can probably tell I am, I am over uh, the moon right now with excitement. Super happy. Uh, love the blue. Uh, the blue is a much darker blue than the renders make it look on the website. Uh, the steel bezel, of course. I, like I said, I'm not a gilt guy very much. Um, that was the other option that you have for this. And uh, so I definitely decided to go with the blue because I think it suits me a little bit more. So look at that. So awesome. Uh, the sides there. We're going to check out. I, I, I want to play with the bracelet because, of course, the uh, Monta bracelets have the fully articulating links so we can uh we can stack those up a little bit they fold in on themselves very cool uh let's go ahead and give it some wines here the salita sw330 movement that's inside and that is buttery smooth this is also a proper uh gmt bezel so it is it is bi-directional uh, which is, like I said, something that a lot of lower price GMTs sometimes lack. Um, I'm looking at you, Christopher Ward, and the Trident and Watch. But yeah, there we go. Of course, uh, the Exhibition, I'll, I'll open the clasp real quick so you guys can get a better look at that. The Exhibition uh, case back with that, uh, oh, let's focus in. Yeah, there we go. Exhibition case back with that uh, decorated rotor on there as well. Very very nice. Uh, let's go ahead and get it on the wrist. There's the Sky Quest on my 8-inch wrist. Now, the only benefit, the only benefit to having an 8-inch wrist is that when you buy a watch on a bracelet, uh, most bracelets come uh, with enough links to be sized for an 8-inch wrist, and most watch companies just put all the links on the bracelet, and you can downsize it if you need to. So most bracelet, most watches that I get in with the bracelet is usually a perfect fit as soon as I take it out of the box, which is which is awesome. Um, yeah, I'm I'm stoked. I'm stoked. I'm super stoked. Um, like I said, this obviously getting this watch is a big step uh, in my journey for watch collecting. I mean, this is the first you know real luxury watch that I've ever owned. Uh, so I'm really excited about it. I, I'm looking forward to spending some time with this. So yeah, just my very quick, very brief, like literally just open the box impressions. Um, the bracelet is super comfortable, as everybody says. Like I said, love the blue, uh, love the darker blue, because it, it looks more, I don't know, it looks more tealish, looks looks more of like a greener blue on the render. So I'm, I'm very happy that the blue is dark. I knew it would be because I've seen like regular pictures of the watch and stuff as well. So this is one of those things, again, this is the first luxury watch that I purchased, and you can just kind of tell um, when you first get it in your hands. You know, the excellent bracelet, just the, the level of the finishing on the watch, I mean, you can just tell right away that this is, you know, a cut above the kind of stuff that I've, that I've had on this channel um, previously. So let's take it back to the desk. 
So yeah, I'm, like I said, super excited uh, with this Monta Sky Quest. Uh, you guys are going to be seeing a lot more of it on the channel uh, in the weeks and months to come for sure. Uh, I am recording this later in the evening. I unboxed it earlier this afternoon. Uh, it's been a really fun watch to wear on the wrist. I can tell you that the bracelet uh, has been, has felt like it's not even there, honestly. That's how comfortable it's been uh, for that first day so far. Uh, just really enjoying, like I said, getting to know the watch better uh, and, and just kind of discover it as we go. So like I said, more on this one uh, to come. But the, the main part of this video today is we are talking about the Nekken Renegade. Uh, this is a watch that uh, I've had for now for about a month. You guys have seen me talk about it a little bit here or there. I wanted to spend some time with it to formulate my thoughts for the review, and now I'm ready to go ahead and deliver that. Now, that being said, this is going to be a little bit different than my normal watch reviews. Typically with my watch reviews, um, I will go through first and kind of run down the technical specifications of the watch and kind of the nuts and bolts before I really go into my opinions. The thing is with this Neck and Renegade, um, I don't really need to do that because I did just review a couple months ago the Nazario Sauro watch, also from NTH. And the cool thing about NTH watches is that the most of the specs, like the case, the bracelet, the dimensions, are the same across all of their different watches. The thing that varies from watch to watch is gonna be the aesthetics with the dial, the bezel, and things of that nature. So if you wanna get a full like technical spec read out of this watch, I would advise you to go back and check out my Nazario Sour review. I'll link it up in a card up here and down in the description below so you guys can check that if you missed that the first time around. And for those of you not familiar with NTH, because I know I have talked about uh, this watch specifically before a couple times, the neck and line from NTH uh, is my personal favorite of the bunch. It's one of the reasons that I picked up the Renegade. Uh, the inspiration for this line is the Tudor Submariners of the 1970s uh, that have the snowflake hands and also the square indices around them. Uh, the inspiration for the Renegade dial specifically came from uh, Chris Vale seeing a Tudor sub that had kind of been patinaed and, and washed out through years of exposure to the sun, and the dial just kind of took on a unique look and a unique characteristic. Uh, so he decided to make a variant of the Neckin, uh, kind of patterned after that, which is pretty cool. So let's go ahead and take a look at this watch up close uh, for my full review of the Neckin Renegade. So let's talk about what makes the, the Neckin Renegade uh, the Renegade and talk about this dial that we have here because this is, of course, the uh, the unique feature for this NTH. So much like all of the uh, Neckin variants, uh, it does have the, you know, Tudor Sub-inspired uh, handset and markers. Uh, you have the snowflake hour and seconds hand running around the watch there. Um, you have the squared uh, indice markers on the outside. On this watch, they're actually painted markers. Uh, I know on the Neckin Modern Blue, uh, you actually get applied markers, and they're a little bit more uh, like a crisp white than you would than you see on this one. Of course, the the main the main feature on the Renegade specifically is this this ombre gradient dial uh, that we have on here, which can you know look for uh, you know from this like rich blue that you see here at a certain angle to almost like a tan color uh, if you have light shining directly on it, and of course that's, you know, that runs from the center of the dial and then out on the outer part of the dial, uh, you have just a plain black uh, finish, which matches well with the black brushed steel bezel that we have on this watch. Um, and and for me, this was the thing that kind of sold me on this watch, was the, uh, the color gradient. The blue on the modern blue, uh, because I, I was really debating between this one and the modern blue, the blue on the modern blue uh, is a really rich blue and it's really cool, but I just, I love the unique look um, of this Knack and Renegade dial and, and just the fact that it could, you, you could play with it and have it be, you know, a few different colors um, depending on which angle you're looking at it, depending on how much light the dial is catching. And I think that's a really cool standout feature uh, for this model in particular. Of course, much like all of the NTH subs, this watch looks fantastic uh, with the lights out when the loom is all lit up. Uh, generous amounts of loom, uh, both on the dial itself and, of course, in the cutouts in the bezel, too. It's a really stunning watch uh, <laughs> when, when looking at the Illuminova picture here. And I also want to point out that you can also get the Knack and Renegade with a date window as well. Um, the date window is normally positioned at the 6 o'clock 
position on the dial. Um, I opted for no date uh, just because I think this dial layout is too too good to uh, <laughs> to to bother with the date cutout at that six o'clock position. Though it does uh, fit in well with the aesthetic of the watch uh, with that square cutout where this rectangular marker would normally be. So here is the Neck and Renegade on my 8-inch wrist. Yeah, the only thing I was concerned about with this is that the size might be a shade small because 42 and 43 millimeter divers tend to look a little bit better on my wrist, but I think this wears perfectly, actually. And you can see that um, where, the, where the lugs end on my wrist, even if you do have a smaller wrist, uh, I think this will fit you fine. It's a very versatile size. Uh, I, would, I think most people would agree at this point that 40 millimeters is pretty much like a universal sweet spot for most folks. But yeah, I think it wears great. Huge proponent of a vintage inspired diver on a distressed leather strap. I think it's a perfect look for this watch. Uh, but yeah, the Neck and Renegade on, again, an 8 inch wrist for you guys to check out. Let's talk about uh, the, the couple of dislikes that I do have with the watch. Uh, the first one is with the painted markers on here. I do kind of wish that they had gone with the applied markers that you do see on the Neck and Modern Blue. Uh, those crisp white markers uh, really do stand out and look awesome. I, I think I understand why uh, Chris Vale decided not to do that with this one, uh, just because the dial is the feature on the Renegade, and you want to uh, you want to be sure that that stands out and that is what you're observing and not distracted by, you know, those really bright white markers. But I think it would have looked good, with especially considering you have the bright white uh, cutouts painted in on the bezel. I think it would have matched it nicely and just given the watch that little extra bit of demand. The other big criticism uh, is something I talked about during the Nazaria Sour review as well, it, to a small extent, is the bracelet. Um, I've gotten to spend some time with this bracelet and I have to be honest, I'm not a fan. I, I'm just not a fan. Uh, I had this watch on the bracelet for a couple days. Uh, despite the fact that the bracelet is really, really well constructed, um, there's not a lot of play here. You know, the finishing on the bracelet is nice. The clasp is excellent. Um, I just didn't find it a uh, very comfortable. It did tug at my arm hair um, and uh, quite a bit, which of course, if you have very hairy arms, uh, you know that a, you know, really good bracelet that doesn't do that is like a godsend. So yeah, like I said, the bracelet lasted two days before I took it off and I haven't put it back on since. Um, I don't really know when or if I plan on doing it again, which is a shame, because like I said, I think the bracelet is constructed well, finished well. Um, it's just, it's, like I said, for me, it just wasn't very comfortable. But that being said, uh, those are really the only criticisms that I have of the Neck and Renegade. And even though I don't like it on the bracelet, it's a good thing that this watch looks killer uh, with a wide, wide, wide variety of different straps. So the two colors on watches that are easiest to pair with different straps are black and blue. And this watch happens to have both colors available, which means that pretty much any strap that I've put on this watch so far has looked fantastic. I very intentionally for this review uh, put it on this Harween leather strap, this distressed, uh, really soft leather strap, because I think that leather on a dive watch, on a vintage style dive watch, looks absolutely killer. Uh, I think it's a perfect look for this watch. Uh, I've of course put it on a ton of different NATO straps. It's looked excellent with every single one. So the watch is hugely, hugely customizable uh, with you know various different ways that you wanna dress it up with different straps. Uh, the dial really can't be done justice in pictures. I know, I know the renders of this watch on the NTH website makes it look super dark blue. Um, and I, I'm doing the best I can to kind of show off the different colors of the dial. It's, it's one of those things you do have to kind of see in person, though, to really gain an appreciation for it. Uh, I went in a little bit with a little bit of trepidation just because I wasn't sure what I was going to get dial-wise. Like, I tried to look at as many pictures as I could. I tried to watch as many videos as I could of this watch before I bought it. And the dial really exceeded my expectations uh, when I got it in. Just again, the, the kind of the color change variants that you can see in the dial, uh, the, the brush strokes that you can see in the center of the dial as well, especially uh, when it's in that more tan configuration. And the other thing that I love, and again, I, I believe this is common on most of the NTH line, steel bezels are not uncommon on watches, but typically when a watch includes a steel bezel, uh, it's going to be just a regular silver steel. It's not gonna be painted in any way, shape or form. I really appreciate uh, the fact that you have this black steel insert. Like, I love that you can see the brush lines in there as well. 
Um, I like that it's something different than just the typical aluminum bezel that you would normally see in watches in this price range. And again, just another signature for the NTH line uh, to help it stand out amongst all the other uh, divers that are out there in that range. So yeah, as you guys can tell, uh, I am very, very much smitten with this watch. I do love it. Uh, I'm really happy that I decided to go with the Renegade as opposed to the Modern Blue. And again, if you're into that Submariner style diver, um, I, for my money, NTH is the top of the class in this like mid $600 price tier. I don't think it gets any better uh, than this. You know, between the thinness of the case, uh, between the, the bevy of different dial configurations that they have available. Again, some people might take umbrage, you know, spending that kind of money on a watch with a Japanese movement inside of it and not having a Swiss movement inside of it. Hasn't bothered me one bit. And I will say, too, this, this watch has probably gotten more comments out in public just from random people uh, than almost any other watch that I have so far, uh, which has been kind of surprising to me, I have to be honest. But again, I, just, I think that ombre dial is just a great, uh, aesthetically pleasing thing to look at when you're checking out this watch. Yeah, absolutely adore the Deccan Renegade. It's a fantastic watch and one that I'm very pleased uh, is in my collection. And it's, it's going to continue to get a ton of wrist time uh, in the future. I, there's no doubt in my mind about that. So guys, that is my full review of the Neck and Renegade. Do me a favor, if you did enjoy this review and found it informative, hit the like button down below. Also, if you're new to the channel, thank you very much for cruising in and checking it out. Uh, if you like the content that you see, hit the red subscribe button and ring the bell icon so that you never miss when I post a new episode. And of course, I'm also on Instagram. Uh, you can find me at Budding Watch Enthusiast, and I would appreciate it if you would follow me there as well. You guys, thank you very much for watching, and I will catch you all the next time.